and welcome to my kitchen and today we're going to do a baking basic. I know that I have uploaded several bread recipes but I have recently discovered a bread recipe that I have perfected for sandwich bread that I want to share with you. It's super simple, super basic and the most perfect loaf of sandwich bread you will ever make, I promise. You can make this just by hand, you can make it in your mixer or you can make it in your bread machine. So. Come on along and I'm going to show you how I make this amazing, perfect sandwich loaf. Okay, we're going to go over the ingredients for our basic sandwich bread. That This is a totally new recipe that I've been playing with and this is good for uh, regular baking or bread machine baking. This makes a one and a half pound loaf. If you have a one and a half to two pound bread maker, then you're in like Flynn. You can just go ahead and make this. So, what we're going to start with is two teaspoons. This is instant yeast. If you use regular uh, rapid rise or any other type of yeast, this would equal two packets. Well, this would equal one packet of yeast. Pardon me, one packet. This is two teaspoons of instant yeast. If you use anything else, you're going to need to bloom that in the water. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of softened butter, one teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of instant dry milk powder. You can use any kind of milk powder that you like and it's all going to be fine. We're also going to be using one and a half cups of warm water and we're going to go ahead and show you that in a minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop, we're going to break, and we're going to bring the mixer over and then we're going to make the dough. Oh, that would be four cups of all-purpose flour. Thank you, honey. <laughs> I got so excited. We get started building our dough. I have one and a half cups of warm water, and this is less than or up to 110 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and sprinkle in our yeast. That's two teaspoons of yeast and two tablespoons of sugar in with our butter. So that's two tablespoons of butter. And then... I like to add all the flour at one time. All right, then I like to add the salt on top of the flour along with the two tablespoons of dry milk powder. All of that. And if you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can do it this way, or if you have a mixer with dough hooks, you can do it this way. Um, I like to do it this way because it's quick and easy and I can make bread very, very, very simply because I have this lovely piece of equipment. If you are making it by hand, it doesn't take that much time. Just mix everything together in a bowl until it starts to become a dough and then take it out and knead it on your board. But try not to add too, too much flour. I would actually hold a cup of flour back if you're making it by hand. If you're making it in your bread machine, please layer the uh, ingredients according to your manufacturer's instructions. Most bread machines recommend that you put the yeast on top, the water on the bottom, and then all of the other ingredients in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start kneading this after we lift up our bowl. Perfect. It is perfect. Okay, I'm going to start my timer. We're going to knead this for five minutes. And when it's done, we'll be back. Okay. Our bread has finished um, rising. Not even. Okay, it's finished kneading and I'm just going to go ahead and take my scraper which I don't even need because this dough is perfect in here. Alright, so I'm just going to grab it by hand. So I'm not going to rise in this bowl but I want you to see how beautiful the dough is. Okay, this is for one, one and a half pound loaf. We're just going to bring it into a beautiful dough ball. Now I have a bowl here that I'm going to rise it in and I'm going to spray the top. I'm going to put a bonnet on it. Um, we're going to rise this until it's double in size. And then when we come back, we're going to deflate it. We're going to pan it. And then we're going to rise it again. So just like the south, the bread will rise again. And we will... <laughs> well, I'm full of it today, aren't I? All right. <laughs> I slay myself. So we'll be back when it's time to pan this up. Okay, we're all ready. This is risen. And it's beautiful. 
And before we deflate that, I sprayed this very liberally, this bread pan, with some sunflower oil from my Misto. But sometimes, you know, when you spray, it's a little uneven. So I like to take my pastry brush and just give it a good once over so it's nice and even. Now, with your extremely clean hands, we're just gonna deflate this dough. I don't like to need, you don't need to knead it anymore. It's kneaded all that you need to knead it. And if I say knead one more time, it'll just be un unneeded. You don't need to say knead anymore. I know. There's no need to say knead anymore, no. even if we're kneading. No need. No need to no. knead. Okay. Okay, wow, that's well, almost as bad as... Need, but no more need. There need. is no more. The need to knead is no longer needed. Yes, exactly. Okay. We need to stop. <laughs> It's almost as bad as the way. <laughs> okay, you're just gonna press the air out of it. You don't have any need to. Again? Sorry. There's no. We've already been through this. I'm so sorry. Okay. You don't have to punch the dough down because the dough. Is it you know it's a living breathing thing so I'm just gonna pull it out here and put it on my board and I'll show you how I like to just fix my bread dough for a loaf make sure you don't get it much larger than your pan see so like that you want to measure it sort of and I like to just don't get anything in it roll it up Okay, just like that. Pinch it together. Okay, and then do you see these ends? I'll show you on this end. I poke it into itself and I take that top piece and I pull it over and I pinch it into itself on the bottom. This is going to give you a really pretty loaf. I'll show you again at this end. You poke it into itself and bring that bottom, which is the top of the bread, up over itself and pinch. And pinch all of this together really well. Okay. Just like that. Into your pan. And then I like to take my hands and just push this all the way down into the pan because this is going to help any air bubbles that still right remain. Like there's one, you can just pinch it out. And this gives you a really beautiful size loaf. It's going to have a really beautiful crown on it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray the top. I'm going to put this bonnet back on it. I'm going to set this on top of my stove. I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees and we're going to allow this to rise for 30 to 45 minutes until it has um, risen over the top of the pan and then we're going to go ahead and bake it. So I'll bring you back when it's time to put it in the oven. Okay, our bread is ready to put in the oven, so I'm going to gently remove the bonnet. And I have also prepared, if you're watching the raisin bread and haven't seen the basic loaf or vice versa, there's a video for each one of these separately, but these are both going in the oven at the same time. So, these have risen and they have crowned beautifully, and I'm going to pop these in the oven, just like so. and they will bake for 25 to 35 minutes. And when they're ready to come out, we'll come back and show you what they look like. Okay, the bread is ready to come out of the oven. Here is our sandwich bread. And here is our raisin bread, Beautiful. cinnamon swirl. They came out gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then these are gonna need to cool. And the way I like to just tea pan these I do like to take them out. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a little while. What I can do is I can show you what 
the sandwich bread looks like because this is the kind of sandwich bread I've been making every week. This is what it looks like when you cut into it. It's perfect. It is a beautiful crumb. It's very easy to slice and you don't have to slice a thick piece. You can slice a really thin piece off this and it's still very sturdy. Show how soft it is. It's nice and soft, but it's not you know, it's it, you know, sometimes when you cut soft bread, it, it's so squishy that you can't get a decent slice off of it. This is not the case with this recipe. And uh, and it's because we use few amendments. The only amendment we put in this loaf was the, the instant milk powder, but it makes all the difference. So I'm going to wait just a little while, and I'm going to bring you back, and I'm going to slice into these because my husband can't seem to control himself. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, very disappointed to know that I'm not going to hack into these right away because he wants to eat them. And I keep telling him that when you eat hot bread, you get a stomach ache. And what did you say to me? I'll risk it. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Okay. So we should try it. <clears throat> no. <laughs> we'll be back in a little while and I'll show you what these look like when they're sliced. This has cooled sufficiently for now that I am going to go ahead and I'm going to slice it. Now, the end here, you see, it always has this piece here that's usually for the squirrels but you know or the, um, husband. Or the husband just go ahead and use your knife and use the weight of the knife and don't press down when you slice it but look at that okay beautiful. you look at that bread it's perfect beautiful crumb no holes and I'm telling you this bread is awesome okay so Rick's going to slather this up with some butter. I'm sure he's going to eat that for a, a snack because I know he's hungry. I'm very hungry. But that is uh, the most beautiful sandwich loaf that you are going to see. So, I hope that you give this bread recipe a try. I hope that you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya!